Okay, it says we are live. Wait, I want that little button to turn. Ah, there it is. There it is. Now I think we're live. Hello, everybody. <laughs> we are live. <laughs> um, I'm Ellie Walsh. I forgot who I was. Empowered Dreams Hangout. <laughs> uh, and we're here hanging out um, to empower you. To, and that's what this topic's about today, right? Like how to go from ordinary to extraordinary, extraordinary. I don't, and I don't know, I have to ask our global panel if they say that um, because they use different words than we do. So we'll have to, we'll have to get into that here. Um, but welcome here if you're with us live. Tell us, I hope you're not with us, Jed. Tell us in the chat. <laughs> Say hi. If you have questions, ask your questions. But let us know who you are, where you're from. If you're watching this on a replay, um, we do jump back in during the week. So definitely use that chat. Say hi. Let us know you were here. And uh, leave your comments and your questions always. We really appreciate that. Um, that's part of be empowering each other. And in essence, I guess that's what my topic's about. <clears throat> and when I look down at this panel, and I probably see them a little differently than you do. They come in a different order for me. Um, I do look at these people and know not one of them is uh, ordinary or average or typical. And we'll we'll talk about those words. So, but I want I want to give them a chance and uh, give their extraordinary hello. Now I put them on the spot. I'm kidding. <laughs> so let me start. On my left, this goes in alphabetical order, I realize, for me. And that's you, Beck. We got you on here first, so just say hello and tell us where you're from. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name's Beck Walker. I'm a naturopath and I live in Australia, and I'm an online entrepreneur. And uh, I work with people with autoimmune issues, and I'm all about helping people to live a thriving, vibrant life. Cool, excellent. She is not ordinary. The next person I see here is Carol. Hi, my name is Carol Mikowski. I'm down the other end of the house from Ellie in upstate New York. Uh, I'm retired and also working as an entrepreneur at present. And uh, my passion is to help uh, other boomers and people, you know, middle-aged boomers, get back in touch with, uh, with what their dreams and visions are and play them out for the rest of their lives instead of just being confined. Cool. She's not ordinary either. And Catherine. Hello, it's Catherine from Alameda in California, and um, I'm a blogger and... Um, and I like to help um, boomers also, but the, before they do retirement, it's an important that they learn how to have their own business. So when they do retirement, then they won't have to worry about money. So my age, my age target age limit is um, 50 to 67, and um, I'm an online entrepreneur too with this wonderful team, and I love them, and they're all so great and supportive. And um, can't wait to hear the the message that you're going to say, Ellie. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Again, not another, not another person. She is not ordinary. And uh, here's our Aussie friend. Well, no, Beck's from, from the land of Oz, they call it. And our other Oz friend, Terry. Hey, folks. Can you hear me okay? I'm actually, uh, I'm actually at the mechanics. My car's getting fixed down there. But um, so there's a bit of background noise. But, yeah, I'm a mum. I've usually got rainforests in the background because I live out of town. Um, surrounded by <laughs> no houses. Uh, mum of three, just really, uh, you know, I'm a singer songwriter. I'm also a naturopath trained as a natural health practitioner and um, just really passionate about making a difference in the world, you know, for the health of our world. So, um, you know, that's why I also, you know, love this. I'm tapping my, my computer here because I love the freedom of just being able to, you know, work from my laptop. I've come to, to put my car in at the mechanics, but here I am jumping on a hangout with all of you. <laughs> Um, because it's just creates that mobile freedom. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's. I'm excited to see what we we uh, you know discuss today because I think it's so you know we're all ordinary and we're all extraordinary at exactly the same time. 
and I'm excited to explore this topic because it's, it's powerful and it can make the difference between whether you step into an extraordinary life or, or you stay just really stuck and, and sort of feeling like you're just living an average life or something. So anyway, over to you, Ellie, and let's take it away. Cool. Excellent. It's true. <laughs> Normally, if there's background noise, it's those crazy lorikeet birds, okay, that we can't hear her sometimes because she's the outside kids. and the kids. parrots are all over the place. It's amazing. That is very cool. So she's not an ordinary person either. Here's what I really believe. <clears throat> there is no such thing as ordinary. Sorry. Um, I think we, I think we use those. I don't think those words, ordinary, uh, average, typical. I don't think those words should be used when you describe a human being. Okay. Uh, I maybe like there's a, I don't know, an average chair. All right, or an ordinary table, but I don't think any human being is ordinary. I don't like to use that word in in a description for for people, but I do believe there are lots of people living ordinary or average lives, and and some people don't think that that's bad. I'm not saying it's bad. Here's what I'm really saying. And you guys, uh, Terry has young kids, okay? Little children are not saying, I want to grow up to be average. They don't, okay? I want to be ordinary. They're saying, I don't just want to go to the moon because people went to the moon already. I don't know. I want to skateboard to the moon. Or, uh, <laughs> you know, I want to be... You know, uh, well, they used to say they want to be the president. I don't know if they ever want to be the president anymore. Because they see that as not ordinary. Um, I want to, you, know, uh, uh, you know, excel in the Olympics. I, they, they don't say, I want to be average. Oh, I just want to be a secretary. I don't, not no little ones, all right? <clears throat> and... I happen to think society, Australian society might be different, but not really, not what I know of it, than the U.S. here. Um, we kind of teach kids to be average. We might tell them to excel a little, but in essence, we promote an average life. And then you become a teenager and you want to fit in, okay? And that idea of fitting in is going back into ordinary and average. Uh, and I don't I think we all have callings. There's not one being that is born, okay, who is not extraordinary. If you just really look at how life is even created, how could you even think of the word ordinary? And um, I do believe we're here to step into above average lives extraordinary lives, extraordinary lives. I don't mean that means you need to be the president or skateboard to the moon. <laughs> but stepping into that specialness of who you are, and I don't, at least my generation, okay, and, and from what I'm watching, uh, we don't promote that so much because we want our kids to fit in because we want them to be able to make it in life. So we have a tendency to promote ordinary. And I don't think the extraordinary calling ever goes away. I think we just quiet it. So I know for me, all right, I always had like kind of contrast in my life because they were telling me to be a secretary. Anybody that knows me knows I should not be a secretary, okay? But <laughs> they didn't know what to do with me. I was a little different than the rest of them. And so you felt like, oh, God, I'm supposed to fit in over there. But I feel like I have this calling, and I didn't, I wasn't even able to know what that calling is. Again, I would love to see where schools worked more or people worked more with kids to find out what is that, all right? What is that specialness? Because I believe we all have talents, you know. Um, 
and uh, you know extraordinary well to some degree yes because just the way you bring out your talent it is different it is different than the other person you know so I think then you get to points in your life and you start realizing hmm I don't know like this was I did I did good stuff it's not like you didn't do good stuff and but there's some something missing there's a piece missing I have a really good life but there's a piece missing you know um, I, when I look at this panel I see these people that step up into above average um, extraordinary extraordinary uh, and it's not that they're like you know saving people out of burning buildings or maybe they have I don't know but I, I believe that extraordinary is about tapping into what makes you tick and living it and stop worrying so much about blending in. You know, we're not teenagers. Maybe that's one of the um, blessings of not being a teenager anymore. As you, as you get a little older, you realize, no, I don't got to. Okay, I don't got to blend in. You know, where teenagers are more pressured to do that blend in. But... To, just to just to even say that to yourself, okay? Maybe I live this uh, this lovely. I, I'm saying you have a good life. Maybe I live this lovely, so-called ordinary, average life. But I'm not. I'm not average. I'm not ordinary. Just being able to uh, express that, I think, starts to bring back up. Well, what is it? What what is it that I where I would like to stand out more. What more would I like to do in my life? How would I like to show up? When we look at our friends, usually, they're all in that box. We all have a tendency to live in a box. So if you don't have friends that are stepping out of average, you know, my thought process with that is, is find people like we found here. You know, is this an average business? No. Um, and there's not average people working it. And again, but am I really more special than you watching this? Absolutely not. No, you probably are more special than me in a lot of areas. You probably have better skills than me in a lot of areas. You know, um, I just decided I have to be with people like this, like we're seeing here on that panel. I need to... Um, feed that extraordinary because when I feed it and I see these other people living it stepping you're stepping out of comfort zones when you do that um, it spurs the creativity in me it's it just it, it lights me up to see people doing things that light them up am I making any sense here Somebody better tell me what they think on all of this. Yeah, uh, I mean, how can anybody argue that, really? Uh, well, I guess you could, depending on where you're coming from. But yes, each one of us is certainly unique. Yes, you are making sense. And uh, in our uniqueness, uh, we are certainly extraordinary. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, so many of us squelch that uh, because that's expected uh, as we get on later on. As you say, coming out of teenhood, uh, yeah, you're able better to express yourself at that point because you, you don't have to conform to the peer pressure so much. But then a little bit beyond that, then you get into the economics uh, of your life and you know, looking for a job and that sort of thing, and certain amount of conformity is is expected. And um, I have read that uh, conformity is the worst enemy of freedom, and I could not agree with that more. Um, also, uh, you know, we're reading a book uh, for a uh, group that we're in called The Millionaire Messenger, and uh, Brendan Burchard mentions that uh, everybody has uh, something extraordinary in them that uh, that they can uh, help others with and you know man it, it sets you to thinking 
you know, what what is it? Okay, fine. You, you speak about the business here, and yes, what you learn in the business, you can turn around and help somebody else with. And beyond that, what else? What else do we have within us that's extraordinary? Uh, something to ponder, think about. So that's what I have to say at this point. I'll say. Oops. I'll say something. Um, also, I've been thinking that um, maybe, maybe if you think yourself special, then you have to live up to that to that uh, tag, and you're kind of scared to live up to it. Um, you're kind of uh, nervous because you may not, you may fall behind, or you may not make it to that level. And maybe that's why you're um, you don't want to think of yourself as special, because um, you just you just feel like you have to live up to that tag. I mean that you have to do something really special if you think yourself special. Just a thought. <laughs> that is an excellent point. That really is, right? And you know, and then I have to laugh at that because um, you know, now we go back to uh, judging, mm -hmm. right? And um, and and giving people the right to judge us. See, there, I, I don't want to give people the right to judge me. I really don't. I'm not telling you that I haven't, and I'm not telling you that I never do. You know, so I am affected sometimes by other people's opinions of me. But Sydney's not with us tonight. She loves when I say years ago when I went to doing a class and I said, you know, other people's opinion of me is none of my business. It really isn't. My opinion of me is my business, but not uh, because you can't change other people's opinions anyway. You know, you find out I got to be this way for this one and that one for that way and that way for this one. It's like what the hell? I can't make all them people happy anyways, you know? So it's my opinion of me. But that is a really, really good point. Um, and of course, that's silly, you know, because here's the real deal. I believe everybody's special. So why don't we just, why don't we just embrace that? Stop embracing average. Carol hit the point right there, conformity. And let's be real, okay? Governments like you to conform. Uh, corporations want you to conform. Societies like when you conform, you know. Um, unless maybe if you live in the rainforest, where Terry does, I don't know. But on a whole, uh, uh, people want you to conform, and um, and they kind of then say that to you. What do you think is special? You know, and and my belief is your answer should be to them. Yes, I am, and so are you. So live up to it. And some parents say that to the kids. They say, you're nobody special. Mm -hmm. and then, and then, and then mm, they, oh, my God. Well, you know, I had that statement said to me when I was young. And what, what it was said yeah, to me, me was, is who the hell do you think you are? Mm -hmm. All right. And it was like, whoa. You know, <laughs> and I remember thinking I was little. Me, right. glorious me. And I was already smart enough to keep my mouth shut because I was in trouble. All right. <laughs> That's yeah. interesting. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Who else is going to throw in their two cents here? No, two cents is too ordinary. $4.28, please. I'll jump in. Well, Great. go ahead. Go right ahead. Um, yeah, I just think about this topic, I think, yes, it's just like what we've been saying, so much about just receiving those messages from outside ourselves or even just, yeah, allowing all of those societal messages and that, that come in to actually influence us in the way that we live our lives, you know, rather than actually listening to, you know, ourselves and what's in our hearts and... Um, you know, what are our deepest longings and yeah, I just think so much of it is just about being true to ourselves and about really being who we are and and honouring that, you know, all of that and yeah, like we're saying, not stopping at, um, yeah, not stopping at being influenced from the outside so much but just mm -hmm. embracing ourselves completely as who we really are and I, I think that's where, yeah, our most creative you know, juicy selves and lives come from, in my experience. <laughs> I love that. I don't know if Terry can join us with her car getting fixed over there. <laughs> and if she can, she'll jump in. Um, I love that. It, 
And here's, so here's my tips to people. Because you want to know what? Beckett's a little younger than me, probably more than a little. And um, I love to see that. I love to see when you're, you know, that younger people, that they're stepping into that more. They're, they're getting that message. Um, they're realizing, I've got to pay attention to this voice inside of me. <clears throat> I think you're seeing that grow. You know, that's really exciting to me. Um, so if you're younger and you're watching this, keep stepping into that. Like Beck said, stop letting outside influence tell you who you should be. Listen to who you're feeling you should be. You know, and if you're, you know, a, a little older, here's what happens. We have not listened to that for so long and listen to the outside influence that it's a little harder sometimes to uncover and to follow it. That there's no doubt about that. And 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 sometimes it doesn't matter in age here. You could be 22 and feel like, oh, I don't know what it is, you know. So my uh, tips on this is to first of all just start recognizing that. Okay, no human being is average. They're not. Okay, or ordinary. And um, and to live that extraordinary, that extraordinary life, it's just that little extra, that little word extra in front of ordinary, you know. And that little extra, I think the first step of it is just recognizing that. Now, I don't care what other people say, I'm not ordinary, neither are they. See, I don't think I'm better than anybody else, and I don't think I'm worse than anybody else. I think that we all have this uh, divinity, uh, uh, awesomeness with inside of us, you know. So just recognizing that. And um, I don't know, for some people it's journaling. For some people, I believe it's a lot of personal development reading. The more you read those kind of books, the more you, like this book that Carol and I are reading again, uh, I think Catherine's reading it too, The Millionaire Messenger. So is Beck, right? I just realized. She's on that book now too. That more it it stirs that voice back up inside of you. You know, uh, the more it connects you with you. So that's a, a really really important thing. And find a community. You know, and it, like here we are. We're in a global community sitting right here now. All right, we're in. Uh, Carol, Carol and I are in upstate New York in the U.S. Uh, Catherine is across the country. All right, in California, and my two friends over here, uh, when I see you, you're one on each end, all right, are in uh, Australia. It's another freaking day there already. That amazes me. I just love that. Terry, I see you sitting there. Are you able to jump in? Yeah, I can now. Because I know you got good stuff to say. <laughs> well, I just resonate with everything you've shared, really, all of you. It's just so brilliant. Um, but yeah, a couple of things. I, I, I just want to pick up on that word extra that you were talking about. And I think when people say, you know, what's the key to you know an extraordinary relationship or a long-lasting relationship? It's like, you know, it's often it's just you know going that extra extra bit, whether it's with your attitude, you know, <laughs> whether it's with you know, your communication, you know, that's in in that sphere or in your business, you know, going that extra bit, and just in your life overall, it's that. It's that little extra word, whether it's just you're prepared to just do what it takes to follow your dreams and step into that extraordinary life. Um, and it can just be the tiniest things like committing to, you know, meditating for 10 minutes a day but doing it, making sure you just go that extra mile and actually do it because it does make such a difference, you know. <laughs> but it, it can be all sorts of different things that, but it's just that, that extra thing that if we're living a sort of average um, I don't even like the word average, but just a, a life where we don't feel like we're thriving. It's it's often those little extra things that we just let slip. You know, we just let them fall away, and we we just we don't recommit to those each day, even though we know that that's often just the difference it takes to really feeling like we're living an extraordinary life. And, and often we might we may not even be doing anything different than we already are doing. It's our own experience of it. Often, you know, it's our own experience of what's going on that. that actually, you know, 
is whether we feel like it's an extraordinary life or a, a stuck life, <laughs> you know. I think that's just a powerful thing to remember. Yes, there's all sorts of external factors and having our business really working well or whatever it is. Sorry, there's all sorts of background noise here. But, um, you know, all of that stuff does make a difference. All our community, you know, the sense of community, all these things are parts of helping us step into that extraordinary life, but it's also such an internal journey. And it's about going that extra extra mile inside ourselves so often that I just really wanted to kind of bring to this discussion. And um, the other thing is around, for me anyway, as a mum, I've got three kids, and the the thing that I want to kind of instill in them is, yes, absolutely the sense that they, they are each so unique and special and deserve an extraordinary life. And at the same time, not to confuse that sort of... Um, words special and extraordinary as sort of more deserving than anyone else or um, superior to anyone else or any of that kind of, the, the languaging stuff can get tricky sometimes, the way we associate words. So I I really want my children to really have that humility to know that they're not better than anyone else, you know, that, yeah. they, that they are ordinary in that way of being, you know, just, you know, part of this human species <laughs> and, you know, connected with all life on you know on the planet and you know all of that kind of stuff but also know that essence inside themselves that yes they also are special they are extraordinary and they can really really go for their dreams and for me you know modeling that for them as a as their parent I want to be someone who models you know really going for my dreams and allowing them sort of giving them more the permission of them stepping into that in their own lives as it unfolds um, yeah, just that humility alongside the extraordinary. I just, I just always think they're important for me um, in my parenting, but also just in my life philosophy. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, here's so here's a huge point I think. Okay, and I, I mean, wouldn't it be great to finally see people step into who they are? Okay, that we are. We didn't all come here just to live a mediocre life. I don't believe that's what we're here for. All right. <clears throat> And so to realize that we are all ordinarily extraordinary, that's what people are, all right? That that becomes the ordinary of people stepping into that extraordinary, you know? So it's true, and like Catherine said it before, and I had it said to me, you know, like when, they're say, when people are saying, you know, what do you think you're special, that, you know, they're trying to say, you don't deserve more than anybody else, and I don't disagree with that. Again, I don't believe I'm better than anybody. I don't believe that I'm worse than anybody. And um, and I, you know, I think we all, I think the universe is just here to say, you know, here it is, you know, but you have to recognize it. So if you want to live that extraordinary life, you have to recognize the extraordinary within you and within your neighbor, you know, because if I think who the hell do I think I am, that I'm better than other people, then I, I have no understanding of connection, none whatsoever. And I don't believe that you really get to your core unless you have that understanding of, no, we are, really are all connected, you know. I mean, maybe we really prove that just several months ago, Terry and I know each other on the internet for years, and um, you know, and so we kind of were on some hangouts, and then more so, we got on hangouts with each other, but then finally met each other in real land, okay, we touched, all right, we hugged each other, and as while it was exciting, there was a part of me that was like, yeah, that's normal, that's what a connection we already had, you know, from across the globe, you know, so those understandings, so I think we go back to if you're not reading personal development or Wayne Dyer books or Marion Williamson or Millionaire Messenger or, you know, you, you, you're missing out. If you're not taking those 10 minutes a day, you know, and just quieting your mind, however you do it, might be listening to music, might be guided meditation, might be just breathing, you know, it just might be breathing. Um, you you miss those points. You don't get to step into. I think when you do that, you get to step into the, those extraordinary moments, and then those moments become 
they become more and more and that they become ordinary. That's pretty wild. We could go on this one for hours. I won't. Because I just went like, oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, we didn't, oh, oh, did we lose her? So I don't know if somebody's got some last minute stuff here that you just want to add. We are at 6.30. We usually only run this about 30 minutes. Anybody want to throw in your $5.29? <laughs> just a couple things. I think um, the sign of a true leader is someone who can help uh, someone else identify what's uh, special, what's what it is that's extraordinary about that person, and then help them uh, develop develop it. So, uh, to me, mentorship uh, is important uh, in life, and I think uh, that that's one of the jobs of a mentor or leader. Um, also, oh, Christmas, something you just said. And well, I'm going to go back to to one of your quotes, Ellie, that you had posted a couple of days ago, and it said, "Standing alone for something you believe in is much better than standing with the crowd of things you don't believe in." So, um, and that to me goes uh, it dovetails with what uh, Catherine said about uh, you know sometimes you feel like you can't live up to the expectations. So, ah. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot there. <laughs> there's conflict, and and yet sifting through it, and like you said, using techniques such as meditation and what have you, and hopefully having a a good mentor in life, someone whom you uh, uh, admire and and respect, uh, all helps you come through this. And that's it. I'm I'm off. <laughs> cool. Cool. Yes. Anybody else? We're all good? All right. So some of you are here and you're like, what the hell? I thought these people were going to talk about business. <laughs> and sometimes we do, okay? But for us, uh, we are all in business for ourselves but not by ourselves. We're in this extraordinary team here, and it's a bigger team than that, and then there's an even larger team than that. And uh, I would say those people are all... Um, stepping into that little extra, stepping up into out of average. Um, it's we're not an average group, that's for sure. Well, all uh, ages, all colors, all religions, all over the all over the globe. That's always pretty cool. So you know, we've learned that um, if you want to change your life, it starts here, here, here. That's where it starts. Okay, and um, even even you go, no, no, I just want a business. No, no, <laughs> change here, work on here, work on here. And then the business end of it comes really, really easy. I do believe that we're in not an ordinary business, uh, an extraordinary business with an extra extraordinary group. So um, if you were invited here and you're like, what is this all about? Because we're going to close off here in a moment, but we're going to hang together because we've got some extraordinary things to talk about and we're going to mastermind. Um, and if you're interested in what we do and you were sent to this page, click a button down there or get back to the person who invited you here. Uh, this, this really enables people, you know, on, from all different levels, people come into this business and, and this, these kind of communities and the trainings also that we have that go on uh, enable people to consistently do that little extra and um, and, it, and and then be able to step into you know that extraordinary life so in in all different ways and forms so that's that's the beauty of this group it truly is so I think we're ready to roll here we're gonna we're gonna hang out with each other if you're watching live I think I think I haven't been able to check the page that much but I know Carol is on there and other people are on there checking that page if there's questions if we miss them we'll get back to them if you're watching the replay again use the, the comment box say hi to us and uh, because we're out of here we m my goal always is is to empower other people and so do I benefit of course I do when you help somebody empower somebody you become empowered so that's the goal here all the way around I'm gonna be hitting that button to say goodbye uh, unmute yourselves everybody say goodbye 
get in touch with the person who invited you here or hit that button. We're out of here. Bye, everybody. Bye. See ya. See everyone. One thing, Alan, before you hit the button. My, I don't know if it, I got my finger on it. Go ahead. Uh, Terry, you have somebody in the comments, Wendy, saying hello to you. Oh, brilliant. Hey, Wendy. I think she's a fellow Aussie, if that's Wendy, you let. Or yes. Sam. <laughs> yes. Oh, cool. Great stuff. Okay. This is hysterical. My, I'm sure we're still recording. My, my mouse is on that and my finger is down. When I release this, we're out. Uh, so you quit your time. <laughs> awesome. Okay, cool. All right, we're going now. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. See ya. Bye.